Hi, and let's begin. When you first open your scanner laptop, you'll see the intraoral scan icon with the Bluetooth. Double left click on that to open your program. You should have your scanner plugged in and turned on. The green light will appear on the base of your scanner. It opens to this uh, prescription screen. So what you'll need here is a patient name. You cannot use a space in between the first and last name because it is a file name. You can use underscore or you can simply capitalize the name, um, first or last name first, whichever you would prefer. So uh, you wanna type in a name in the um, patient name. And then in the upper right-hand corner, you see restorations or orthodontics. If it's anything, if it's anything that does not include a restoration, you simply click the orthodontics uh, tab and then you're finished. You can hit the save button at the top of the screen. If it's a restoration, click restoration. You can't save it yet until you choose a, a, a tooth number. So you can choose multiple teeth numbers. Of course, if it's uh, multiple crowns or a bridge, it automatically defaults to crown. You can change that to a ponic, uh, whatever it is that you're doing at the time. At this point, whatever is blue, highlighted blue, you're able to use. We can't scan yet if you look at the top and the scan button is grayed out um, because we haven't saved it yet. So as soon as we click that save button, the scan button will appear. We now click the scan button. Uh, at the top of the page, you see we've got the upper, the lower, and then the bite scan. Uh, it, 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 it uh, highlighted the mandible. If I choose to scan the upper first, I can do that. I just simply click on it, uh, left click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the lower. So I'm gonna right click there. Um, we are going to, for now, I'm not gonna use the motion sensor. I'm going to use the icons at the bottom center of the screen. I cannot start it yet because my wand is in the holder. As soon as I pick up the wand from the holder, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner, it is connecting, it's turning on the scanner. Every time you see that red square in the middle of your screen, it's telling you that the scanner is on and it's looking for a tooth. So if you look at my upper left-hand corner, you can see, sorry, upper right-hand corner, you'll see the teeth in the screen. They're far away. I'm staying far away because as soon as I get close, I'm going to scan. When I get close to the tooth, that that a red square is going to turn green and I'm gonna start scanning. So when you start scanning, always begin on the occlusal surface. And I'm going to turn the volume down. It is adjustable to any level that you'd like. Uh, you notice I went into the red square again. It's still looking for a tooth, I stopped. So all I need to do is go back to any area on the occlusal that it's already scanned, and I will begin scanning again. So it will travel as fast as you can. I like to always start on the occlusal and stop on the occlusal. That's important for many reasons. I stopped, I pulled the wand out of the mouth, and I have two options below. I can either stop the scan, which is this icon here, or I can save the scan. Only save the scan when you know that you're, you know it's ready. I don't know that it's finished yet, so I'm just gonna hit the stop. When I hit the stop, I now can use my left mouse to look at my scan in all different directions, and I can see the bright green shows me where I didn't scan. If this were a crown prep, those small holes on the premolars are fine, but the large hole on the contacts is not fine. So at this point, I would hit my start button again. I don't want to save it yet. My red square comes up right back in. Now I need to scan those contacts, which can be a little tricky for a beginner, but you'll learn to angle the wand to where it will get those angles. Now I'm confident that I'm finished. I could stop it again and look, but I'm confident I'm finished, so I'm going to save it. Now, if you look at the top of the screen, it bounced over to the maxilla. I can still go click back to the mandible if I want to see it, uh, but I'm going to go back up to the maxilla. I'm going to hit my start button, and I'm going to do my opposing. For the opposing, uh, for a general crown prep, 
you need 100% of the occlusal. You need a good amount of the buckle because that's how we attempt to take our bite. I'm finished. Um, because it's the, um, the opposing, I can take a look at it and see what I've missed. But I'm confident that's good enough. Those holes on the lingual are not critical at all to my restoration. So I went ahead and clicked the OK button. Now you see at the top of the page, it went to the bite. I'm going to have the patient close down. And I'm going to hit the Start button. For the bite, it's very quick and simple. You can see the arches on your left. You're going to um, simply scan a small square covering the gingival margins on the top and the bottom. A small square, I like to do it between the first molar and the second premolar. I'm finished. If you look at the bottom, I cannot save it yet. I can only stop it. So I'm going to stop it. Now, if you look at my screen on the left-hand side, a little rainbow, I can adjust uh, my clearance. I want to move my model so that I can see the inside. This shows me where my initial contacts are with my teeth. And also, if I have enough clearance for my crown, I do have right at a millimeter and a half, so I know I'm good. And that is that is the entire case. So I recommend if you're learning that you just continue to practice this uh, several times. You can practice on each other, uh, practice on a model until we uh, get to uh, an advanced step in our training process. Thank you.